be transgender as when Chelsea Manning made the declaration of the name change and for herself and her wish to transition medically. Um, we knew in the LGBT community for over two years that Chelsea Manning was tra is transgender. Uh, we knew that because of writings and on LGBT blogs, internet postings and so on where Chelsea had been calling herself Brianna Manning um, on her Facebook page before it was before her arrest and so on. So for her to come out um, so bravely uh, with uh, with her uh, with her statement about being a woman uh, and insisting on the proper pronoun use and insisting on the proper medical care in in prison. Uh, first of all, what we need to understand is that Chelsea Manning is the first transgender military prisoner to um, to emerge and to be dealing with the issue of receiving appropriate gender uh, transition medical care in a, in a facility that historically does not provide that. Leavenworth um, is a male facility. They have already stated they will not give her the hormones that she needs to medically transition. So that is, that is the first struggle for her to be who she is. She's a young person. She has spent her life um, being a woman, this is not something she's decided to do. Uh, what, what people need to understand is that transsexuals, transgender people, don't just decide to change from one gender to the other. That's not the way it is. Chelsea Manning was born with a, with a male body. She was male assigned at birth, but she always knew inside of herself, as all trans, transsexuals do, that she was a girl first and then a woman. Um, and she's in a position now in her 20s where she wants to make that more apparent in her gender expression and to medically transition to do that. So um, battleground number one is for her to receive proper medical treatment. It is a medical necessity that she be allowed to, to receive female hormones um, and, and gender reassignment surgery if she should want it in the future. She hasn't expressed that yet. Um, so so that's, that's one piece of it. Um, the other piece of the struggle, as far as I see it, is getting a pardon for her to get her released soon. Um, <clears throat> instead of her wasting away for 35 years for an act of conscience in a military prison. And the third is to show support. And so she has herself requested um, that her support is right to her. And we, we, can cover, we can cover these areas that people can help. But, but those are the necessities for her, the person, right now. And that, that's my personal focus, is that connection on how to, how to support this person who, in my opinion, is one of the greatest Whistle, if not the greatest whistleblowers on, on, on crime, on war, on this particular case, war crimes in U.S. history, and history will show her as such, but also that she is a person, she's an individual who's suffering greatly and has suffered greatly. So, Beth, have you heard anything from either her attorney or other people who have been involved with the, the support committee as to what's actually happening now and uh, and if you this might be an, an opportunity to both tell us that and how we can support her. Okay, sure, yeah, I'd like to start there because I think that's the priority. Um, well, her attorney, uh, I think his name is Coombs, has said that um, if Leavenworth refuses the hormones that he's going to force them to give them to her. Now, that in itself would greatly benefit the transgender community. Uh, the, the prison population for trans people, it's all over the map, state by state, as to uh, what prison will do for a trans pr uh, prisoner as, uh, assisting them in their, transi in their gender transition. Uh, in Massachusetts, uh, 
our prisons here, we are required to give a hormone, hormone therapy. Um, but many states are, are not so, and, and military prison has not historically given any such assistance. Why? Because trans people have not been allowed to serve out and openly in the military. And so this is like, she's breaking, she's a trailblazer, a trailblazer, excuse me, uh, in this regard. So um, Coombs has said that he's going to force the is issue. So um, in addition to Coombs's work, and I'm sure there's going to be a legal battle on this front with Leavenworth, with the federal government, um, there is a petition that people can sign specifically to get Chelsea Manning her necessary medical treatment. And that petition can be found on firedoglake.com. Firedoglake.com. Dot com. That's a website, and it's it's a prominently uh, positioned on that website. So please sign that petition. That's number one. In terms of getting her pardoned, there 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 are numerous petitions going around for this. But um, the primary one you can sign is at www.bradleymanning.org. Now, that website and the Facebook page for Save Bradley Manning, they're in the process of changing their name to yeah. Chelsea Manning. With Facebook in particular, it takes a long time to be able to accomplish that without losing all your likes. But, they're, but they, they respect her new name. It's just that they haven't been able to change over yet. So petition at bradleymanning.org. Another petition is at the White House uh, site to get uh, a pardon to, to release Chelsea Manning, and that can be found at petitions, plural, petitions.whitehouse.gov. You can go there and sign that one. Um, that's, that's an interesting one, because I just signed that one, I think, yesterday. Thank you. And, and they, ask for, they ask for a couple of things that, that you don't, you, I'm not usually asked for. And I can't even remember now, but it's it's very accessible. So I encourage people to, to just go right there. Yeah, yeah. And and there's a there's a third petition that I I found very interesting. It's a petition uh, of people. It's on Credo. It's a petition of people who want to serve part of Chelsea Manning's sentence in order to get her released. Uh -huh. So you can go to Credo. On, on their website and look for a petition that says, uh, it's called, I will proudly serve part of Bradley Manning's sentence. There are over 4,000 people that have signed that and they're looking for 5,000. So if every one of those served time, she'd be out. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> How generous people are. Really, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember talking about that and I think I even signed that petition because I, I thought this was so creative. Yes, and uh, <laughs> and you know it'll never happen, probably, right? Right. But but it does make such a powerful statement that I'm willing to give some of my time for Chelsea Manning, and not only for Chelsea Manning, but you know I I, I was I was in awe of Bradley Manning when the uh, the pretrial hearing occurred because so many people who have served so much time being tortured and in solitary confinement. And I know there are people who have spent a lot more than, than Bradley Manning did, but that when Bradley Manning came into court in the spring, there was a, 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 a sense of integrity and a way to articulate that was, that was astounding. Um, I, thought, I thought Bradley Manning was so clear as to what his situation was and, uh, and it, it was really compelling. And so I thought when, when Chelsea Manning, when Bradley Manning said, I'm no longer Bradley Manning, I want to be referred to as Chelsea Manning, I am Chelsea Manning, that, um, that I think it's connected to that sense of integrity. And you know, I've had numerous conversations with people, many of whom have rolled their eyes and said, oh, how many more things can we deal with? And I think, you know, it's, this, is, this is life. This is life in the 21st century. 
if you think you've run out of things to deal with, have a cup of coffee and relax <laughs> because there's a lot more to come. And I think the issues that, that Chelsea raises um, are certainly things that, that any of us who identify as sexual minorities have to deal with. And the fact that Chelsea Manning has come out this way invites us to, to look at a number of things, a number of ways we think of ourselves as gendered and, uh, and what that means not only personally, but certainly politically. And, uh, and you know, just yesterday I had a conversation with someone who said, you know, I'm, I'm right there politically with every sexual minority and everything. And so I said, well, what about Chelsea Manning? And she said, you know, I think it was just a little too much. And I said, well, this is part of being, uh, of being an ally. You know, so so I thought well, I'm, and I, I think I would, I raised this topic because I knew you were going to be on, and um, and and I know you know we're, we live in this valley of politically correctness, and um, and it's so I think it's a challenge for a lot of people, um, that just the whole question of well, okay, sure, I can sign the petition, I can think about you know I can say yes, you know, give Chelsea Manning everything she deserves. But I think the, the further invitation, and that's part of what I want us to do on Bread and Roses, is to get away from what I call the soundbite radio or soundbite television, to really deconstruct these notions, to look at what, what does it mean? Because I would imagine, and that's what I want to ask you, that when you decided, or Chelsea or anyone who's part of, of the transgender community you know, says, I, I am, when Bette Power says, my, my pronouns are he and him, that, that that's profound. And, and so I want, I want to invite you to, to talk about that, both in, in light of you, but also in light of Chelsea Manning and, and the, the community that you're a part of. Oh, sure. Well, oh, I really appreciate it, um, because as, as you know, these are um, underserved uh, population and undiscussed topics. So I really appreciate it. Um, I am a transgender man. I have not medically transitioned. It, 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 there are many reasons for that in my case, many of them medical in my case. I'm kind of an exception that way. Um, I knew from the time I was four years old that I was a boy. I felt that I was a boy. Um, and that hasn't changed. So I've been living my life as a boy and then as a man. Um, I founded the East Coast F to M group, which is for transgender men, a support group in Northampton. I started that in 1992. We still meet every month um, on Sundays, the second Sunday of the month. It was the first ever support group in New England anywhere uh, for transgender men in 1992. Um, so I resonate with Chelsea Manning's um, story and identity. I'm sure that Chelsea knew from the time she was a, a, a young child that she was a girl. And uh, now many of us, like I did, try to suppress that information. In my case, I did it for 10 years living in the lesbian community through alcohol and drugs. I suppressed it. I just numbed out. I was trying to fit in somewhere, and that's the community where I was trying to fit in. It didn't work. Um, but as soon as I got clean and sober in the early 80s, my identity again emerged. And I guess what? I had to deal with it sober. Um, now you think, you know, you've heard one, one more thing when you hear, you know, that Chelsea Manning came out as trans, trans, transgender on top of the whistleblowing and every other thing that she's been so bravely involved with. But think about us. I mean, we deal with this every day. Um, we deal with being transgender. Um, many of us also deal with racism, classism, ableism. In my case, I'm medically disabled as well. Um, some of us deal with poverty. Many of us are under, underemployed or unemployed because the status of trans people in America today is the poor one. We do not have equal rights in employment. Um, Massachusetts does have um, 
a law that mandates against discrimination in employment and housing, but not yet even in public accommodations. So we can be asked to leave a mall because we look gender different. We can be asked and often forcibly asked to, to use, uh, not to use a restroom of our, our appropriate gender. We can be arrested for using that restroom. So we are basically, I like to say, we're sort of back where the lesbians and gays were in the 1960s, almost before the Stonewall Rebellion. And it's ironic because our people, uh, Sylvia Rivera was, is, is known in history to be the, she's a trans woman, she was a trans woman, the, the first to, to throw the, the, the first uh, stone at the cops that started the Stonewall Rebellion. And so it didn't take long, but prom promptly the Gay Liberation Front pushed the trans women, many, many of them trans women of color in the New York City area, out of the gay movement. So right from the start, trans people were disowned from the gay movement. We, you know, it's like all these years later, and now we're finally, we have our own movement, we're trying to play catch up. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I think about you know, lesbians in the women's movement, and women wanted to push lesbians mm -hmm. out of the yes. women's movement. I mean, many women did. The Lavender Menace. Yeah. And, uh, right. you know, there's this, there's this, you've got to fit in, you know, you don't be too different, don't deviate too much. Yes, yes. Well, well and, and along that line, you know, recently the Human Rights Campaign, which is HRC, which is the uh, the prominent lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender uh, national rights organization in this country uh, disavowed Chelsea Manning in a statement. Uh, on the one hand, their statement said that they supported her right to get medical transition treatment, but um, said What should not be lost is that there are trans, this is a quote from an HRC statement. What should not be lost is that there are transgender service members and veterans who serve and have served this nation with honor, distinction, and great sacrifice. We must not forget or dishonor those individuals. Private Manning's experience is not a proxy for any other transgender man or woman who wears the uniform of the United States. So there. So what does that mean? That means that um, they are trying to push the movement forward, at least at lip service, for trans people to serve in the US military openly, as they were on the forefront of getting gays and lesbians to be able to serve. So there is there is a militarism there that is obviously supported, whereas a hero, a shiro who blew the whistle on U.S. war crimes is not a proxy for any other trans man or woman who might serve. So they're embarrassed by Chelsea Manning because they're trying to set it up as though trans people should serve in the military, we're all conservative, we're gonna, we're gonna salute U.S. war crimes or turn the other eye, and She's not a proxy. They're disavowing her. And that's that was that leads us back into this other dimension of of Chelsea Manning and how um, the entire transgender community is not supportive of her. And uh, because I think just like I was so surprised when I discovered there were uh, there were Republican lesbians <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. Um, <coughs> That, that I, you know, I shouldn't have been, but I, I still fall into some kind of naivety. So, um, so it's it's good to to have my myself reminded that um, that transgender people, just like gays and lesbians, just like um, heterosexuals, cross the lines or, or run the spectrum from far left to far right. That's right, and. Um we're diverse, and I like to say that, you know, there's a lot of diversity in the transgender community, but in my opinion, there isn't enough unity yet. Um, we are very different people. Individually, our politics can be different, just like lesbian and gays. 
Um, it does disappoint me, though, that a movement, an LGBT movement that started with labor movement, with anti-war movement in the Viet against the Vietnam War in that era, uh, can no longer, it seems, make those connections, those progressive, those liberal coalitioning connections. Um, I've always been working class. I've always been a social justice activist, anti-war activist, uh, civil rights activist as well. So when you say I wear many hats, it's only because I, I feel that it's being holistic as a person. So I personally cannot understand LGBTs who will, like I said, salute the militarism that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke against in this country. To me, that's an ethical and a moral issue. And it's one thing to, it's, in my opinion, to support the U.S. military. I have nothing against the U.S. military. In fact, the equality that's achieved there will trickle down quickly to corporate life, to the business world. That's just the way it works. I, I came from the business world, so I, I know that. But when the U.S. military is not defending our shores, is not acting as a national guard to protect our people, but is being aggressive interventionist and violent and, and committing war crimes, then I, I think that anyone with their eyes open and has a moral conscience should be able to tell the difference between an ethical armed forces and one that's committing war crimes. If you're here, let me just let folks know you are listening to WXOJLP, Valley Free Radio. It's Friday afternoon. It's a little after 4.30, so you are listening to Bread and Roses. I'm your host this week, Hockey Wieland, and my guest is Beth Power. We are talking about issues transgender, um, started with Bradley Manning, and, and now to the, I think, the, the broader question, um, and that is this, this whole issue. You, you raised it earlier in our conversation. Um, when I was four years old, you said, I knew I was a boy. And um, with conversations I've had with a number of people leading up to today uh, are these, well, you know, I've always felt androgynous or this, that, and the other thing. And, and, uh, and I am, and I think a lot of friends think, well, we have what we would consider, we women consider male qualities, you know, aggression and uh, I don't know what those are. Like right, we're, right. We're, we've sort of constructed these gender definitions, and um, and not be part of the transgender community. I'm curious about you know how you come to this, and 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 I don't. I'm not asking this, and I really want to be clear because you know so often years ago people would say, well, educate me about what it means to be a lesbian, or educate me about what it means to be gay. And, you know, one of the retorts was, you know, go read yourself, educate yourself. <laughs> um, so I, I don't want to fall into that same trap and say, well, oh, come on, Beth, educate me and educate our listeners. <laughs> but I think there are some, some things that, um, that we're not going to get without these kinds of conversations. So, um, so you can take that anywhere you want to go with it, uh -huh. and uh, but but I think there there is that dimension of what what I call that kind of essentialism is what what is a boy or what is a girl and and how did you and, and other people in in your your community come to that in a way that that I certainly haven't and a number of other people. Right. Well, I, I can I can only speak for myself as an individual how I came to it, and perhaps others will identify or not. But I, what you raise about gender behavior, um, I, I, for for males or female, I had to examine that, especially during um, my feminist days. Uh -huh. I had to ask myself, well, am I, you know, am I a boy? Am I a man? Or am I just uh, am, I, am I a woman who 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 rejects uh, uh, sexism and rejects the stereotypical behaviors assigned to women? And of course I did because now I consider myself a pro-feminist ally, uh, and certainly went through my, a feminism phase myself. But there really is even under lie underneath that a difference. 
if you if you if you know in your heart, if you know in your consciousness that you are the gender that you weren't assigned at birth, and, and your gender that does not match your body, that's a very different and a very deeper experience than feminism, which rejects gender norms. I'm also uncomfortable in my body. I'm uncomfortable with the shape of my body. I, I, I dress in a way to, to, to make my body appear more, more male. Um, I cut my hair in a certain style appear more male. Feminist women don't do that. Feminist women will behave differently. They will not be constricted in their careers or in their aspirations and uh, in, in their behaviors. Um, but they probably don't feel incongruent in their bodies uh -huh. like trans people do. Yeah. Our, and in our, sexu in our sexuality, in our sexual behavior. Um, you know, what happens in the bedroom is very personal, but if, if we're not treated like the gender that we're, we are, that we know ourselves to be, it's very hurtful. Feminist, feminist women don't experience that. It's, it's, so, it, so there is some overlap because we, sure. you know, but it's also qualitatively different. So, for, you know, for, for Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Manning was always a girl and always a woman. And Chelsea Manning, in her own writings on this topic, will say she was trying to do the man thing by going into the military. Right. This is a common theme. Now, trans people cannot serve openly in the U.S. military. And, but yet, many male-born individuals have to go, most, have to go into the service or choose to as an option, including those who feel themselves to be trans women inside, to be women inside. Some of them do so, like Chelsea, to go into a hyper-masculine environment to try and suppress or change that woman inside they know themselves to be. And this is what Chelsea did, and this is what others have done. Um, there is a, a woman, a trans woman, Kristen Beck is her name. She's the first known SEAL. Army SEAL, oh, Na I think, no, it's Navy SEAL, yeah. excuse me, Navy SEAL, to have emerged as a trans woman after her service. And she writes about this, how she tried to suppress her womanhood by going into the U.S. military, into a hyper-masculine environment. And you know what? It might work for a time, just like my drinking did for a time, but then it stops working. You cannot disown who you know yourself to be inside if you're transgender. It has to emerge or you die. There are, the, the suicide rate among trans people is, is really high. The trans, the, the suicide rate among trans people, that I had a student years ago who was, who was working with, uh, in the trans community, and one of the things that, that she shared with us was that a, as, a, as a population, your suicide rate is higher than anybody's. Yes, it is. And and this is this is telling, and it's it's a sign to us that you know as allies to say, wait a minute, this is not okay. You know that that we we have to keep expanding our understanding of all these differences. Yeah. And and to not only just sort of intellectually do it, but to do it politically. Politically, socially, uh, morally, we're another minority, and and any progressive who has uh, been involved in causes that fight for the equal rights and social justice for minorities will understand that we are another, yet another minority, and maybe the last one, although intersex people are on the horizon as well, who need help and allies in struggling for equality. Part of the suicide rate is oppression. Part of it is the difficulty in being who we are. And the oppression is about not having access to equal rights, simple things like employment. Well, I, and I think, you know, I think that is part of the political dimension to, you know, to, to lobby, to work for, for legal changes, for, for, for legal changes. But I think the other thing is that, that is as important, I think, 
is to is to break down this whole bifurcation that comes from these centuries of modernity where you have to be either or it's there's a hierarchy and there's a a binary thinking well are you a woman or are you a man mm -hmm. are you um, a democrat or are you a republican are you a conservative or are you a liberal I mean, and 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 when we say those words and i'm using those advisedly because mm -hmm. Because those are the same, I mean, obviously, the political spectrum goes beyond liberal and conservative. It goes beyond Democrat or Republican. It goes beyond male and female. Yes. And I, and I think however we do it, you know, there, there is this belief I certainly have that whenever we make the change, however we make, however we expand beyond and say no, the either or is an imposition. It is part of the oppression that's been put on all of us. Mm -hmm. And we have to throw that yoke off. And one of the ways that the transgender community uh, invites us to throw it off is looking at you and saying, yes, we are here. I'm your ally. And so what? What? this is where you take the lead. You know, I can stand with my sisters and brothers in the in the, the people of color community mm -hmm. as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King's 50th anniversary and I think even more importantly that 1967 speech and say yes I can't be black I'm not but I can certainly be an ally you have to take the lead because mm -hmm. I am not about to speak for the transgender community that's right, right. Um, and and what I think we, and this is part of, I think, breaking it down too, that it's also breaking down the hierarchies, you know, like, well, the president has to speak and, you know, and everybody just falls in line or, you know, whoever it is, whoever is, you know, on the top of the food chain right now <laughs> is, is the, the leader of the pack. Mm. And that, that what we know in, in the world or the world we imagine that we know is possible is that we're much more a mosaic? We're much more a uh, we're we're much more of like the stained glass window that light comes through and it meets all these different colors, and uh, and so we need we need to hear the voices of transgender people not to be silent mm -hmm. or silenced. Yeah. Right. And, um, and and this is one of the things that that. It, makes me happy to be living at this time is that we're, we're hearing voices, we're hearing disparate voices, we're hearing voices that in the past had to be quieted, had to be shut down, had to be drunk away or you know super masculined away or however it is mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. um, to say no it's, it's we, we, I don't know and that's part of why I do this program is because it's not, a, I'm not challenging anyone. I'm, I'm hopefully bringing forth a curiosity that a lot of us have, you know, about, about the, you know, how we can support transgender people. Um, I had Elisa Klein on a few weeks ago and asking, you know, you talk about being transgender, how about running for city council? Well, why does somebody do that? You know, why does a smart woman do that? And, uh, and part of her rationale was, um, it's this belief that, that we share in this hologram, that theory, that if we can make a change, if there can be transparency on our city council, it means it can be done. And if you can be transparent here, you can be transparent up the ladder. Mm -hmm. So if we can say, we've, we've got to expand, and I don't understand transgender, a lot of transgender issues, and you know what, I don't need to. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, I can ask for things I, I'm curious about, but mostly what I need to do is support you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, and, and I, I believe that one of the reasons why transgender people are so threatening to the establishment is because we really prove the underpinning of sexism, that is male domination, female submission. We turn that on its head. We, we prove that that is not the norm for many people. Uh, the gender roles, I mean, we're basically saying, 
you know, giving the middle finger to the to the normal gender roles, what is considered normal, which is you know masculine men and feminine women, um, who were assigned at birth a certain initial, and and that's the way they feel. Well, that's that's called cisgender, and in, in our community, it's a new word has come out. For listeners who haven't heard it, say that again. Cis, yeah. Cisgendered people are people who are just fine with the gender marker they were assigned at birth. They they don't feel incongruent inside themselves, and with that goes privilege. That goes privilege of just not having to deal with being gender non-conforming. So transsexual people, transgender people, are are not cisgender people. We don't have that privilege of just not having that be an issue. It's an issue for us every time we look in the mirror. It's an issue for us every time we walk out of our home and present ourselves differently in the world and risk being attacked. And the murder rate of trans people of color in this country is off the chart right now, particularly trans women of color, because they are not employed for the most part because of inequality in hiring, and many of them find themselves in positions of being street workers, and in positions of being unsafe, and murdered. And even if they don't, they are murdered simply on the streets based on how they look and present themselves. So cisgender people don't have these issues. Cisgender people are hired, even if they're lesbian and gay. They're hired not because they have protections, we don't have these protections, these basic equal rights. It is wrong for any minority in this country to lack the basic rights of being treated equally and with respect in hiring and firing and promotion, in education, in the schools, in what restrooms we can use, and whether we're thrown out of a restaurant or not. I mean, so progressives need to hear that really loudly, that we lack equal rights. So one thing you can do is get on board with supporting any transgender organization, National, Trans, uh, National uh, Committee for Transgender Equality, um, even the, the gay and lesbian national organizations that are really behind transgender rights. Um, support them in what they're trying to do to accomplish equal rights in this country for trans people. DOMA was, uh, was and is no longer legal, D uh, Defense of Marriage Act, right. but that's only for lesbians and gays. That was only based on sexual orientation. That has nothing to do with ensuring equality or the ability for us trans people to be able to marry openly as trans people or to have custody of our children, not having our children taken away in, in divorces where one of us emerges as transsexual. We get our children taken away. We don't have any estate rights. We don't have any equal marriage. We do not have basic civil rights. And that's anything that any progressive should be able to get around because that's morally wrong. In a country like the United States of America, we don't have the American dream yet. And Chelsea Manning was after the American dream. And right. she thought that as Bradley Manning, her avenue would be to go through the military. She's an intelligent, she's a highly brilliant analyst, internet analyst, we could tell that. Yes. Okay, and she thought her maybe her career in future would be based on her credentials as a military person. And she got caught in the system in the worst way and she got caught now into the federal prison system. This is the biggest hell you can imagine for a transgender person to be in is a federal military prison. I cannot imagine any venue worse than that for a trans person. And if she survives this, it will be uh, with her mind intact and her, and her soul intact, it will be a feat this is of heroic proportions, you know? And I want to add that there are trans organizations and individuals who do see this and support her. 
for all of her. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for noting that because I did note that you know that there was a really a gamut of, of people you know, across the board, and mm -hmm. and uh, and of course there are people in the trans community who um, who say that uh, you know who who are supporting Chelsea Man. Yes, and, and, and what, well, one of the things is that GLAD, um, that's the Gay and Lesbian um, Anti-Defamation uh, Organization has insisted on, is that the proper pronouns be followed for her now and her proper naming. There is, there is AP uh, style book uh, guidelines when journalists write about her, yes. that they should respect that now. and. Um, and there are other organizations that are on board with her, um, so it's you know it's it's not just one way or another. There's a division about her though, at, in the trans community that breaks my heart. Yeah. Because I can't understand how someone who did the right thing when she saw and and, and the fact that this came from a trans woman interests me. That when she saw that what is now called the collateral murder video footage. Yes come across her desk and she saw the Apache helicopter bombers killing not only innocent men and, and, and the journalists but those children that were injured. That, like Frances Crow said to me at the AFC gathering, she said, I'm just glad Chelsea Manning's a woman and a woman did that whistleblowing for once. <laughs> because whistleblowers are often men, are usually men. And I'm like, I understand why that was a woman who blew this particular whistle when she saw children getting bombed. And you know what? None of those soldiers who did that bombing has been charged. None of them have been brought to justice for those murders. And none of them are sitting in jail for 35 years, like they should be. Well, I think this is part of, the, of, that, whole, of that whole insanity of this culture of ours is that on one hand you've got the whistleblower who goes to jail but the the people that she blew the whistle on are scot-free you know where's the justice in that where is the justice in that well that's what we're still struggling for Matt. that's what we're still struggling for so we're we're winding down and uh, and i'm very appreciative of this and i'm I'm just curious, is there, was there a, an issue or are there other pieces of, of this whole, how do we as the non-trans community support you or better understand? And, and I think that, you know, for me the question is there, there are things I don't understand, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, you know, I would just say, you know, keep your eyes open for any initiatives that you might endorse that are for transgender equal rights or within LGBT equal rights if the organization is really um, strongly pushing trans rights and, and support them. Come out to our pride marches. I do know that Northampton is going to have a transgender pride march and rally. Um, I believe it's on October 5th. It's a Saturday. It's 11 a.m. It's at the, the Unitarian Universalist Church on Main Street on the lawn. I know the mayor is going to be there. So Mayor Narkowitz in Northampton, he's going to send a proclamation, he's going to read a proclamation that that weekend is Transgender Rights Weekend in Northampton. Support things like that. Just come out and show your support. Um, I did want to mention that you can write to Bradley, uh, excuse me, Chelsea Manning. Um, okay, folks, listen up. Here's how you can write to Chelsea Manning. Okay, so Chelsea Manning has actually asked for, for her supporters to write to her. You do need to, to use her former name uh, for her to receive your letter. So you could write to her at the following, Commander, comma, HHC, USAG, that's the first line. Attention, PFC Bradley Manning, that's the second line, 239, Sheridan Avenue, Building 417, that's the third line. And the fourth line is JBM-HH, -H, comma, Virginia, 22211. 
Now, if you didn't get all of that, tomorrow, come downtown to the vigil, and uh, we will have our, our usual Saturday flyers, and th that address will be on the flyer. So there we are. So here, here is um, here's another way that all of you who are listening can uh, can join in this. What I love to think of. I years ago heard Thomas Berry and Brian Swim talk about our universe and how it is in fact expanding. And one of the ways that you can get in sync with our expanding universe is to expand your own mind, expand your own thinking, expand what you thought you couldn't do before. You, once upon a time, you might not have thought of a lot of different groups as being equal or as being oppressed, and you got on the side of the people who were oppressed. I heard this morning, I heard uh, um, Robert Reich talk about how, because he was small, he, uh, and he got beat up a lot, he was bullied. And what that taught him was to get on the side of the people who were being bullied, to get on the side of the people who didn't ostensibly have the power. So if Robert Reich could do it, you can too. If you, uh, if you believe in justice, then it's time to open up your eyes to look at justice for our sisters and brothers in the transgender community who need our support, who need us to show up at that rally who need us to pay attention when there are, is legislation pending, when there's legislation to be voted on, to lobby our members of Congress or the, the State House to, uh, to, to do the right thing. So, um, so those are your instructions. If you choose to follow them, you will, uh, you will have a happier life. And you will be part of a, an ever-expanding, wonderful community that believes in justice and is willing to take risks and is willing to let go of that essentially knowing, I know what's right. I know there are, you know, there are two genders. I know that there are, uh, there's a right and a wrong way to do things. And what we've learned over time is that it ain't so, Joe, that the, the world is so much broader than we and our limited minds have come to understand as the truth. So uh, so thank you so much, Beth, for being here. You're welcome. And helping us come to appreciate a, the greater diversity that we have in our world. That it's not simply a question of, uh, of, of allowing some, some repugnant difference and, and that, I think, is really important. If you don't understand something, take the risk of, of embracing it anyway. If, if a sister or brother you know who says, this is, this is my pain, this is what, what I am living with, and it's, it's a result of basic injustice, you have the opportunity to get on the side of justice. And, and here you have it, right here today. So thanks for listening, and uh, in a few seconds you will get the opportunity to listen to Democracy Now! If you didn't hear Robert Reich this morning, you get to hear him now. Thanks, Bib Power, for being my guest today. And uh, Thank you, Peggy Weiland, and free Chelsea Manning now, transgender rights now. Thank you. <laughs>